Sup you beautiful people. Hope you've had a fantastic day. Welcome back to another new episode of What If Naruto Had The Omnitrix. Check out the author of the fanfiction, and give them some love link is in the description. If you guys enjoy this what if, comment down below and let me know. And go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel after watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, and also share this video with your friends. So now let's start this video. At Naruto's home one night, Naruto was in his bedroom looking out into the night sky. He closed his eyes and found himself inside his mind where Kurama and all of the aliens in the Omnitrix stood before him. Naruto? He blast asked. Are you okay? Jazzclops asked. Tomorrow we're infiltrating Orochimaru and Valmark's lair on Earth. It's safe to assume he's not okay. Kurama replied. Agreed. Bray Matter nodded. We've been fighting those two for over three years now. And this could be our very last battle against them. Hey, we'll just do what we always do. Four arms began. Fight until we can't fight anymore. If it were only that simple. Naruto replied, grabbing the aliens and Kurama's attention. Those two not only have Nine-Nine, Tachiko, Dr. Kilotron, and a mass army of drones and probably amalgams at their disposal. But he also has various Akatsuki members at his side as well. The aliens recalling how they were knew it wasn't to be taken lightly. Each of them alone proved to be devastating as Shinobi alone. But as alien hybrids now they'll probably be even more deadly. Gravitak said. Still we shouldn't be discouraged. Diamond had noted. Correct. We must remain strong in heart and will. Kurama agreed. As the aliens agreed, Naruto smiled. Tomorrow let's make the planet safer for humans and aliens. Yeah. The aliens declared. You should rest, Naruto. Cannibal suggested. Correct. We'll need you to be in top form tomorrow for the fight. Trihorn added. Naruto nodded. You're right. Thanks, guys. And with that Naruto came back to reality and went to bed. The very next morning at Konoha Plumber's HQ, all Konoha Shinobi and Plumber soldiers including all of Naruto's friends stood ready with him, Akane, Tenten, and Hinata up front with Magisters Haruzen, Minato, and Kushina standing before them. Today will not only be a test of skill and strength, but of courage as well. We fought side by side for years be it ninja war or invasion. Haruzen began. But now it's time we all stand together and bring an end to Orochimaru, someone who was once one of us. Minato added. He slipped by us for so long leaving very little trail to follow. But now we have a chance to bring him to justice. Kushina put in. Haruzen spoke again. And then there is Valmark. A tyrant who came to our planet looking to conquer it just as his ancestors sought to do. If others could defeat his ancestors like Vilgax, then why can't we? As they continued narrating, in the other plumber bases in Kumo, Kiri, IWA, and Suna, the Kages of the nations were standing before their villages shinobi and plumber soldiers giving a similar motivational speech which was truly inspiring their armies. Shinobi like B, Kari, Samui, Omoi, Chujuro, Kuratsuchi, Kankuro, Tamari, and Gara all stood at their fellow shinobi and plumber's sides ready to head out. All of our own ancestors have made a name for themselves in their own way. And even though we ourselves have made names for us already, why not make another name? A name that says we're not just shinobi, but protectors of our planet? Minato called, as the shinobi and plumbers agreed. Off to the side stood Tsunade, Jiraiya, Azmuth, Conan, and the Sound Five. Just about time. You all ready for this? Azmuth inquired out of the group. We're all set. Kadamaru assured. It's gonna be a bitch, but it has to be done. Taiyuya put in. Orochimaru betrayed us, now we will make him regret it. Kimimaro said. Then show him that you're more than what he ever gave you credit for. Tsunade instructed. Hi. The five nodded. Tsunade, we better get ready. Jiraiya reminded her, and she nodded. Then it's time I slip into something fitting as well. Azmuth activated the mechamorph armor. Tsunade spoke to the group. Everyone move out. They nodded and scrambled into plumber's ships with Naruto joining his squad and one with some of the others. As the ships flew through the sky with the destination of the lair, Naruto looked out the window seeing the ground below. Naruto? Akane asked, as she and Hinata approached him. Hey girls, are you okay? Hinata asked in concern. I'm fine. Just thinking about what we're about to do. I mean an all-out battle like this. I mean granted I know how it feels, but I worry about messing up. We won't mess up, Naruto. Akane promised him. She's right. Sakura agreed as she, Sasuke, 
and Kakashi approached. We're all sticking together no matter what, Sasuke promised. Correct. We don't leave anyone behind, Kakashi added. Naruto seeing his teammates backing him up felt reassured that they can do it. Thanks guys. The plumber's ships from all five great nations arrived at their destination and landed. The shinobi and plumber's groups exited their ships and his amongst the forest trees and boulders like the shinobi they were originally trained to be. They snuck closer and closer before seeing a cave up ahead. Naruto looked at the Amalgam 5. That's the place? He whispered. Correct. Kimimaro confirmed. Everyone move. Minato motioned them to get closer before they were right outside the entrance. Akane was ready for a command until she sniffed the air around her. This smell. She spun and threw a punch in mid-air surprising the group. They saw it peering out of thin air was Tachiko. Geez, nothing gets past your nose, does it? Tachiko. Naruto frowned. Y'all are just in time. Come on out, everyone! He declared, as Nine Nine flew onto the scene, followed by Kilotron, Kabuto, and various robot drones. Ambush! As Myth called, until the enemies stood down as they saw Orochimaru and Valmark emerge from the cave. Welcome humans and fellow aliens, Valmark began. We've been expecting you, Orochimaru smirked. Naruto spoke up. Save yourselves the trouble and give yourselves up. We think not, boy, Orochimaru replied. Because this time we have our secret weapons, Valmark added. As the Akatsuki hybrids emerged from the cave followed by a whole mess of humans slash alien amalgams spliced with DNA from various aliens in the Omnitrix. The shinobi and plumbers were in shock seeing the group with Itachi noticing his former partner. Kisame. Deidara. Kuratsuchi gasped. Sasori. Kankuro gasped. Conan frowned and spoke. You monsters! This is an act against nature that should not have been done in the first place. Conan, if only you had given yourself up so easily we could have spared you and Nagato. Orochimaru spoke. Don't you dare speak of Nagato, you traitor! Conan shouted only for Itachi to hold her shoulder to keep her from doing anything rash. I suggest we skip the formalities and get straight to where we bring you down, I suggested. Don't be so sure of that, Rakage, Valmark said, as one of the robot drones appeared at his side. Why don't we show you what my drones are capable of now? The drones suddenly started multiplying into dozens more increasing the robot army. Replication? Ten Ten gasped. Correct. I was astounded by Naruto's use of shadow clones I've decided to make it part of my army's arsenal. Valmark answered, as Naruto frowned. Using my trademark move like this is not cool, Naruto called. Orochimaru snickered. But it provides us with additional support. Suddenly a portal opened up and stepping out was Professor Paradox. Ben, Kevin, Gwen, Max, and Rook. Ben what say we even the odds? Paradox inquired. Professor Paradox. Ben! Naruto gasped. Hey guys. How's it going? Ben asked. Time Walker. Valmark growled. You once again meddle in our affairs. I'm simply equalizing the odds. Paradox replied. With the original Team Tennyson here, we're sure to pull through. Asmuth said. And it's not just us. Kevin answered. What do you mean? Sasuke asked. Take a look. Gwen said. Emerging from the portal was who else but all of Naruto's fellow counterparts from the other worlds. They still appeared to be 16 to 17, while regular Naruto was a full-grown adult. Regular Naruto was now wearing a white cape with a red flame pattern around the hem that was held together by a red rope, and has the kanji for, 7th Hokage, written vertically down the back. Underneath this, he wore an orange sweatshirt with black stripes, black pants, and sandals. Guys! Naruto cheered. Looks like we're just in time, Bang Baby Naruto said. The five great nations army looked in shock seeing not only the arrival of new allies, but multiple versions of Naruto as well. So many Narutos, Hinata gasped. This is freaky, Sasuke said. Not them again, Tachiko cried. Suck it up, Nine Nine whacked the back of his head. The Amalgam Five approached, as Jirobo spoke to his former master. You replaced us after all we did for you. All you fools did for me was fail me miserably. Now I have more hybrids stronger than you could ever be. Orochimaru replied with no guilt. That's just like you. Green Ranger Naruto began. Tossing aside your most loyal followers when someone new and stronger comes along. You'll never change. Enough of this attack. Valmark ordered. And so both sides fought along with their new arrivals. 
The Shinobi, Plumbers, Hybrid Allies and such fought against the Drones, Amalgams, Tachiko, Kabuto, Nai Nine, and Kilotron. Naruto stood beside his counterparts who armed themselves. Nice to partner with you guys again. Feelings mutual. High school Naruto answered. As regular Naruto changed into full chakra mode and granted the powerless counterpart a chakra cloak like before. Omnitrix Naruto looked at the regular one taking note of his older age. You look even older than last time. And you're the Hokage now? Yeah. I achieved my childhood goal. He answered with a smirk. Less chatting and more fighting. Asmuth called, as he attacked some drones with his suit's blasters. Geez, what's with him? Regular Naruto asked, as Ben got to their side. Don't mind him. He's always like that. You ready, Naruto? Omnitrix Naruto answered. As you say, it's hero time. Ben smirked as the two transformed into forearms. Great minds think alike, huh? Ben slash forearms asked. For sure. Naruto slash forearms agreed, as they went into battle. As some plumbers were blasting away at the Amalgam army, Minato called. Don't destroy them, it's obvious they've been brainwashed by Valmark. Easier said than done, a called, as he was fighting against three Tetramand hybrids while trying not to murder them. Mei was using her boil release to melt some of the drones attacking her. When one was coming at her from behind it was destroyed by Chujuro who wielded his blade. Are you alright Mizukich-sama? Yes, I'm fine Chujuro. Look out, she called as a Petrosapien hybrid tried to pierce him with his diamond arm. Mei acted quickly and used her lava release to trap the hybrid in molten lava. I will never let one of my own shinobi get hurt. She smiled at the swordsman who became flustered. As the shinobi and plumbers were busy taking out hybrids, the multi-Narutos were taking out the drones. Bang baby Naruto unleashed a harpy scream distorting their circuits, while team ninja Naruto took his twin katana and sliced them down to size. Shredder Naruto and Green Ranger Naruto were using their swords to chop the drones to pieces. Psychic Naruto extended his hand out releasing a psychic force that pushed the robots back. Chi Wizard Naruto was blasting Chi magic at some incoming drones. You know this is really easy. Suddenly he was tackled from behind by Sasori who with the speed power of fast track proved to be incredibly affected. What the hell? Spy Naruto gasped as he just destroyed a drone. Is that really Sasori? Green Ranger Naruto asked in disbelief. That is seriously an ugly look, High School Naruto said. It is the order of my masters that I must eliminate you. Sasori began in a monotone voice as he pulled out a ceiling scroll. Behold my army! He unleashed from the scroll hundreds of ninja puppets armed and ready. That's a lot of puppets. Teen Ninja Naruto gasped. Now I will destroy you all. Sasori sent his puppets at the Narutos who were blocking their strikes. We got stop that guy. Bang Baby Naruto called. Allow me! Shredder Naruto fired a blast from the sword of Tengu at Sasori who using his speed dodged with no problem. With that speed he'll be hard to attack. High School Naruto said. Allow me to match his speed. Chi Wizard Naruto said, as he activated the power of the rabbit talisman. So the Chi Wizard Shinobi took off at Sasori who in turn used his own speed as well. What may look like nothing but blur to the others. It was more like a slow-moving fight between the two speedy figures from their POV. You're doing very well, Sasori. You run really fast, Chi Wizard Naruto said. Shindu thought to him, Naruto, you must lose focus. Remember the puppets. On it, Shindu. He thought back as he was blasting at Sasori's puppets destroying them with combustion, heat eyes, and Chi magic blasts. Even your puppets are no match for my power. The shinobi called out as he destroyed puppet after puppet. Sasori frowning as his life's works were being destroyed took action and rammed at the Chi Wizard Ninja making them roll across the ground, before Chi Wizard Naruto knocked him off. The toes stared each other down, as Sasori spoke. I will destroy you for Lord Valmark. He was about to charge only to realize he wasn't able to move his feet. What? He saw his feet were swallowed up by the earth. How did? The two saw Avatar Naruto approach. Earthbending, my natural-born element. Thanks, bro. I knew I could count on you. Chi Wizard Naruto said. No problem. So you wanna end this guy already? The Avatar asked. Delighted. The Chi Wizard answered, as he drew his sword and channeled Chi and Chakra into it. See around, Sasori. He unleashed the power onto Sasori who was destroyed by the power of the attack. One Akatsuki amalgam down, Avatar Naruto said. And more to go. Chi Wizard Naruto said, 
as the two went to join the others. Back at the fight, Kevin was fighting alongside Menma, Tenten, Samui, Sasuke and Sakura. As Kevin was destroying drones as his body was covered in rock texture. So do all shinobi fights look like this? Kevin asked the group. Menma answered. Where I'm from we don't have aliens or technology like this. Really? Your world must be a bore. Kevin said, as he destroyed a drone. Don't be so sure. It has more surprises and fights than you can imagine. Menma replied, as he destroyed two drones. Tintin jumped up and unleashed a barrage of her weapons that rained down on the drones piercing their bodies causing circuits to short out. Not too hard, Kevin said, only for one drone to multiply into 30 more. Okay, this makes it hard. I got this. Jirobo jumped in and curled into a ball before bowling the robots over. Cool, Samui smirked. Guy and Lee were currently engaging against Tachiko in a taijutsu battle, while Tachiko was using both taijutsu and the gadgets in his suit. It's a shame a fighter of your caliber fights for the wrong side, Tachiko, Guy said in disappointment. Orochimaru and Valmark see my potential, and Kilotron gave me this perfect weapon. They notice me a lot more than anyone else back in Kusa. What do you mean? Kidamaru jumped in after webbing up some hybrids. He told us back when he was a kid they wouldn't let him into the ninja academy because all he could do was taijutsu. So he ran away and became a guy for hire. Lee was shocked before turning to Tachiko. Is that true? Yeah. So what if it was? Tachiko, take it from a fellow taijutsu specialist. We may lack in the talent what many believe is the true qualification to be a shinobi, but that doesn't mean we are born failures. He's right. It takes more than jutsu and skill, Guy agreed. It takes guts and determination as well. Something shinobi like Mai Li has proven time and time again. You can be just the same. Tachiko at first felt moved by his words but frowned recalling everyone in Kusa who put him down. I once believed that, until I remember all they cared about what who had real talent. He started firing lasers from his hip belt. Guy, Lee, and Kadamaru jumped away as Lee spoke. Sensei, let's show Tachiko what our taijutsu combined can do against his and his weapons. Lee, you took the words out of my mouth, Guy smirked. The master and student fought Tachiko hand to hand while their enemy used both his fighting skill and gadgets. Let's see how well your taijutsu works when you can't see. He launched smoke grenades that released smoke to blind them. I can't see, Guy called. I got this. Spy Naruto appeared and using a wind jutsu to blow the smoke away revealing Tachiko who looked nervous. Thank you comrade. Lee smiled as he and Guy resumed their fighting. Tachiko was blocking what attacks he could but was starting to get tired. Oh man, I've never fought anything like you two before. What are you? We are Kanoha's beautiful green and blue beasts, Guy announced, as he and Lee performed a trick together. Leaf coiling whirlwind. They delivered a double roundhouse kick to their enemy knocking him back and crashing into a tree. Tachiko laid on the ground with his suit damaged and out of power. That was an awesome move, he admitted before blacking out. Hinata and Gwen were using their anodite powers against Stinkfly Daidara and Aigai Haiden. Gwen looked in repulse at the two amalgams. They look more disgusting than the rooters, and twice as dangerous," Hinata said, as she created a mana shield to protect herself from Haydn's eye blasts. Art is an explosion, Daidara said, as he started dropping clay bombs on the two, with Gwen using her own mana shield. The redhead groaned as too many bombs were dropping. I can't hold this forever. Help is on the way, Rook called, as he and Max joined in and started blasting at the two amalgams with their weapons. Thanks, Grandpa. Gwen said. No problem. This is no doubt one of the biggest fights on our plates in a long time, Max said. Then let's make it one to remember, Hinata suggested, as she ran at Haydn with her Byakugan activated. I will sacrifice you to Lord Jashin. Haydn was about to blast Hinata only for the girl to start jabbing at his body and eyeballs. Mixing my gentle fist with mana will make for a deadly combo, Hinata said, as she kept striking Haydn until he was paralyzed. I can't move my body, Haydn growled. Hang on, Haydn, Daydara called, as he swooped in and spat goo in Hinata's direction. The Hyuga girls started dodging the bomber bug Alamgam, until Gwen jumped in and muttered a spell incantation which created illusions of herself which each fired a blast of mana. Daydara didn't know where to fly to cover or which mana blast was real and ended up getting hit. He started going down leaving a trail of smoke. The bomber quickly regained control and pulled up. 
Now I'll get you. He flew at the two who flew away from him and into the trees. Daydara flew after the two until they disappeared from plain sight. What? He suddenly saw himself colliding with a giant spider web making himself unable to move. Hey, who put this here? We did! Came a hissing voice. Daydara looked up and saw crawling down was catastrophe. Holy shit! He gasped. Welcome to our parlor, said the spider to the stink fly. Catastrophe cackled. Get me out of this web or I'll blow you to pieces! Daydara threatened. Catastrophe turned his right arm into a hatchet. Empty threats from a dead bug. He severed Daidara's head from his alien insect body. Gwen and Hinata cringed, as they watched Catastrophe wrap the body of Daidara in webbing. You're not really going to eat him, are you? Gwen asked, as she started to look green. No! Catastrophe's head changed back to Naruto. We may have some habits of a spider, but we wouldn't dream of eating bugs. Not even hybrid alien bugs. Gwen hearing that felt less nauseous. So what about Hayden? Hinata asked. We got this. Catastrophe Webb slinged back to where Hayden was, with the two anodites following him. I swear Lord Jashin will bring his wrath down upon you and all non-believers. Hayden cursed, still unable to move from Hinata's attack. Cry us a river. Catastrophe Naruto turned both his hands into blades and sliced, diced, and chopped Hayden into little pieces. You'll pay for this. Hayden declared as his head laid on the ground. The symbiotic Naruto wrapped Hayden's pieces into a web sack and tied it up. Take this to one of your ships, Hinata. Hinata nodded and took off with the pieces, as Gwen and Catastrophe Naruto went to help the others. Back at the fight, Paradox was fighting some alien hybrids with his staff, and using time to phase out of existence before reappearing behind another enemy to attack them. Itachi appeared and was using his own shinobi skill and Sharingan to face off against the hybrids. First of all I must say it's an honor fighting alongside the famous Professor Paradox. Itachi began. The feeling is mutual. Here I am fighting alongside one of the, the loyalist of allies in Konoha who risked his very good name for the sake of preventing a village-wide slaughter. Paradox replied. The two jumped away as they were almost hit with ice breath. They looked seeing Arctiguana Kisame standing ready with Samahada. Kisame. Itachi gasped. I will eliminate you, traitor. Kisame called as he fired a water shark projectile in Itachi's direction. The jutsu itself was repelled by another water shark projectile courtesy of Kakashi. Room for another? He asked the two. Always room, Kakashi. Paradox answered. Kisame frowned and started using his ice breath again, as the three dodged. We'll need to disarm him. Samahada does help provide him with energy. Kakashi stated. Agreed. Paradox nodded. I'll handle that. Itachi said as he went at it with Kisame dodging his water jutsu and ice attacks. When the older Uchiha got close he was dodging Kisame's sword swings before dispersing into crows trapping Kisame in Jinjutsu. Kisame found himself standing in a void surrounding by thousands of squawking crows. In reality the hybrid Akatsuki member was stuck in Itachi's illusion. Kakashi, now's your chance. Paradox said. On it. Kakashi ran at Kisame knocking Samahada out of his hand. Now to deal with Kisame, Itachi said as his former partner broke free from the genjutsu. Looks like it's my turn now, Paradox said as he used his power to open a time portal behind Kisame that sucked him in. No, Kisame called as the portal closed. Where did you send him? Itachi asked. Someplace in time where he can do no harm, Paradox answered. Far in the past millions of years ago, Kisame landed in what looked like a jungle. He got up and saw dinosaurs roaming around. What? This can't be. Kisame called, as he saw a Tyrannosaurus Rex coming right at him. He frowned, and got ready to fight. I am above you prehistoric creatures. Nothing can stop me. Suddenly he saw the area around him was getting darker. He looked up seeing a flaming meteor hurling right for the earth which meant only one thing. Oh shit! He cursed. Back in the present, Kakuzu was using all of his elemental jutsu against Rook, Spy Naruto, Taiya. Green Ranger Naruto, and Shredder Naruto. This guy isn't so tough. Spy Naruto used his sword to deflect the jutsu elements by powering the blade up with the element to counter each one. Yeah. We put the kibosh on him and the rest of the Akatsuki members. He's toast. Green Ranger Naruto activated his dragon armor and fired a blast from the dragon head piece which helped destroy the four hearts. You destroyed my hearts, but I still have this. Kakuza launched diamond shards at them. 
Taiyuya jumped in and multiplied into seven. Too bad, you can't stand the noise. They unleashed sonic vibrations at Kakuza distorting his senses and making his diamond body crack. Shredder Naruto turned to Spy Naruto. Together? Let's do it. Spy Naruto confirmed. They channeled energy to their swords and crossed them resulting in a powerful blast shattering Kakuza to pieces. Yes. They cheered. Orochimaru and Valmark seeing this turned to Kilotron who was fighting against both Naruto and Ben who were still forearms. Kilotron, how could the Akatsuki members lose? Valmark demanded. Sorry sir, but we didn't take into account that stronger versions of Naruto would be fighting them. The doctor apologized, as he unleashed electricity upon the two heroes forcing Ben and Naruto to change back. Orochimaru frowned, before turning to Valmark. We must retreat back to the cave. They were about to head for the cave only to be blocked by the Shadow Khan of all tribes. Back! Valmark called, as they turned to go another way only to be blocked this time by the Dark Chi warriors. You're not going anywhere! DCW Kimimaro spoke. Get them! Orochimaru ordered, as he and Valmark fought against the tribes of Shadow Khan and the Dark Chi warriors. Nine Nine flew in and started blasting at the Shadow Ninjas, which didn't go unnoticed by Omnitrix Naruto. That guy's mine! He changed into Jazz Clops and flew around launching energy musical notes at him. When one of the notes hit the hunter he landed, followed by Jazz Clops who became Preta Lizard and attacked Nine Nine. When Ben saw Preta Lizard he looked amazed. I want to be one of those. Kilotron was about to attack him, only for regular Naruto to jump in with a Raisingan in hand. Raisingan! He nailed the doctor knocking him into the side of the cave with him ending up down for the count. Hey thanks. Ben thanked him. No problem, kid. Regular Naruto replied. How come you're much older than these guys even though you're all from different dimensions? Long story, no time. The adult Naruto answered. Can you still fight? Need to wait for a recharge. You take cover until then. I'll help the others. Regular Naruto said as he went to help his comrades. As DCW Kimimaro was fighting Orochimaru, a Malgam Kimimaro jumped in and the two fought side by side. You're helping now? DCW Kimimaro asked. I'm sorry for not listening. You were right. Orochimaru did betray us. Well, better you learn the hard way than not learn at all. The Dark Chi Warrior Bone Shinobi said, as they fought together. Striking Shadow Snakes. Orochimaru unleashed his snakes at them only for Razor Khan to slice them. That distraction allowed Orochimaru and Velmark to retreat into the cave with the entrance closed off by a big metal door. Preta Lizard, Sasuke and Ben seeing this was shocked. We got to get in there, Sasuke said. Preta Lizard became Trihorn. I'll bring it down. He charged at the door, with his strength and horns on his head ramming it down. Not bad for a Dino dude, Ben admitted. Come on, soldiers, Trihorn ordered, as the two followed him. Akane seeing this went to try and help only to be blocked by Kabuto. You're not going anywhere. Out of my way, she ordered, as the two fought hand to hand. Inside the cave, Trihorn who became Naruto again led Sasuke and Ben into the cavern lab where a giant tank of mutagel was set up above them. That must be the stuff they used to make all those people into hybrids, Naruto said. Obviously, Sasuke replied. Where are Valmark and Orochimaru? Ben looked around. The group saw the two standing above them on a platform. Up here boys, Orochimaru called. Come on let's get them, Sasuke said as they were about to hurry only to be stopped by Valmark. Before you do I think it's best I let you in on a little secret regarding the village and the Uchiha clan. What? Naruto ANS Sasuke gasped. You know the incident that happened in the village 16 years ago? The one where the Nine Tails ran amok on your village? What are you getting at? Naruto frowned. Well, the truth is this wasn't my first time I've taken an interest in your village. Say what? Ben asked. I heard the legends of the Nine Tails sealed inside of one of your shinobi, and that it can be removed and controlled. Of course the only one capable of controlling it would be one with the power of the first Hokage, or one who has Sharingan. Since the first Hokage's genes were so rare I could not find anything with it, so instead I used Sharingan. Wait a minute you used Sharingan? Sasuke asked. Then you? Naruto gasped. Yes. I am responsible for the attack on the village. Valmark declared, much to Orochimaru's confusion. You did that? How? I abducted a lone Uchiha during that night, brainwashed him, and increased the prowess of his Sharingan to that of Madara's level. 
Then I sent him to capture Kushina Uzumaki and remove the nine tails while the seal was weak, and used him to sick the beast upon the village. But when my subject was unable to handle the enhanced power of his Sharingan, and died I disposed of the corpse leaving no trace. That in turn released the nine tails from control and you know the rest. Both Naruto and Sasuke were in utter shock at this revelation, as Naruto began. You're the one that caused my parents to sacrifice themselves and seal Kurama inside me? And because of your act placed suspicion upon my family? Sasuke asked. Valmark smirked. Precisely. I didn't realize how much of an impact it would have on you two who I didn't even know about from way back then. Naruto growled as he entered full chakra mode. You monster! Go and let him have it, Naruto. Kurama spoke in his mind. Sasuke growled as well, as his Mangekyo Sharingan activated and drew his sword. We'll make you pay for that. The two launched themselves up from the ground and attacked Valmark full force. Ben surprised that the two going at it with Valmark knew Orochimaru would try to escape. He went diamond head and created a diamond pillar lifting him up to the Sanin's level where they fought. You're out of your league against me boy. Orochimaru warned him. Funny, I fought you before and I did okay. Diamond Head Ben said. Last time was fluke, but this time I will destroy you. Orochimaru declared as he drew his sword and started fighting the hero. Your blade can't work on me. He struck back with his diamond spears. Valmark was struggling against the combined powers of Naruto and Sasuke while Orochimaru himself wasn't managing against Diamond Head either. Valmark seeing they would be finished looked at the vat of mutagel below them and spoke. Orochimaru, we have one last chance to defeat them. How? Jump! Orochimaru looked down seeing what he was planning. You don't really think I'm gonna... Jump! Valmark grabbed Orochimaru's hand and jumped from the platform dragging him down with him. The three watched as both villains landed in the vat of mutagel. They were surprised, as Diamond Head spoke. Did they literally just jump into that stuff? They did. Sasuke confirmed. When they saw the goo was bubbling and erupting, Naruto spoke. I don't know what's going on, but I don't want to wait around and find out. He became XLR8 and grabbed Sasuke and Diamond Head before dashing out. They arrived outside seeing the hybrids and robots were defeated along with 99, Kabuto, and Kilotron, who were restrained and cuffed. Guys, clear the area! Sasuke ordered. What's going on? Sakura asked in concern. The whole cave started shaking along with the surrounding area. Everyone looked as the top of the cave broke open and rising up form it was a giant creature that looked like a white scaled version of Valmark only with wild black hair and his tentacle beard had snake heads at the end. The giant creature laughed maniacally as the good guys were in shock. No way. Jiraiya gasped. My god. Tsunade gasped. Lord Orochimaru? Kabuto asked. Lord Valmark? Nine Nine asked. The monster who was the two villains combined let out a roaring snake hiss, while Naruto, his friends, and allies knew things just got serious. The monstrous villain hybrid roared and hissed as it broke out of the cave lair. Gwen turned to Diamond Head who became Ben again. Ben, what happened in there? She asked sternly. Ben looked sheepish. Well, you see, I don't believe it. Kilotron spoke up, grabbing everyone's attention. Did they really jump into the vat? XLR8 after becoming Naruto again answered. It shocked us too. They must have been desperate or had no other choice. Kabuto deduced. How do we fight something that big? A asked in shock. Naruto and Ben approached, as Ben answered. By using something way big. The two activated their watches and became way big. Way big Naruto activated his chakra cloak and turned to way big Ben. Ready partner? Ready. Way big Ben answered. The two big aliens charged into battle against their opponent who fought back using the striking shadow snake's jutsu. As white serpents extended from the hybrid's arms they wrapped around the wrists and bodies of the two heroes. Get these snakes off! Way Big Naruto called, as both he and Ben fired their cosmic rays at the creature pushing him back and breaking free from their snake restraints. The hybrid hissed as eight snake heads emerged from his back and struck at the two knocking them onto their backs. Okay, that hurt. Way Big Ben groaned. Down on the ground, Team Ninja Naruto gasped. Whoa! Valmer has got them on the ropes. Psychic Naruto spoke in disbelief. You named the enemy Valmaru? Well it was between that or Orakamak. Never mind. I don't think those two alone can face him. Especially with those extra heads. Prime Naruto said in worry. Green Ranger Naruto spoke. So let's give them a hand. He whipped out his dragon dagger. 
I hope Madam Web's power on it still works. I call on the power of the Dragon Zor. He played the fanfare tune much to everyone's confusion. What is that spandex wearing boy trying to do? Oenoki asked. Summoning back up. Shredder Naruto answered hoping it would work too. Suddenly from a nearby large body of water in the forest rose up the Dragon Zord roaring. Every plumber and shinobi seeing this was in shock, as the giant metal dragon stormed onto the shore and into battle. Dragon Zord swung its tail at Valmara making him stumble backwards. The hybrid hissed and punched Dragon Zord in return sending some sparks flying. Green Ranger Naruto played another tune on his dagger, and Dragon Zord launched his finger missiles resulting in Valmara getting distorted. Down below Kevin whistled. Now that is a killer robot. It looks like the odds are back in our favor. Rook believed. Suddenly the eight snake heads in Valmara's back split from the main body and became their own giant white serpents. Akane scowled at Rook. You were saying? Regular Naruto approached. Don't worry. We can handle this. He activated his six pad sage mode and conjured a chakra Karama who roared at Valmaru. Awesome timing, man! Way big Naruto cheered. Suddenly they saw appearing before them was black furred Karama courtesy of Minma, Shindu in a chakra cloak, psychic Naruto in his own chakra cloak standing atop his own psychic Karama. Attack! Psychic Naruto called as they went into battle against the serpents and Valmaru. The two way bigs fought Valmaru as the others faced off against the eight white serpent monsters. Shindu was breathing fire at one before punching it. Not even you are a match for the power of a demon sorcerer combined with the chakra of a tailed beast. Black furred Karama spoke, after jumping away from the snake he was fighting. You boast too much. Psychic Naruto and his chakra Karama had fired a mini tailed beast bomb at his target snake and destroyed it. Score! He cheered. Dragon Zord activated his drill tail and swung it at his opponent's face putting tears and cuts in it. The snake itself acted quick and coiled itself around the Zord tightening its grip. Dragon Zord! Green Ranger Naruto called. He needs help. I'll help. Itachi called, as he activated his Mangekyo again and formed his Susanoo who punched at the snake causing him to loosen his grip. Because of this, Dragon Zord was able to break free and stomp on the tail of the snake to hold it in place. Itachi's Susanoo used its Tatsuka sword to pierce through the serpent's body and seal it away. Wow! Sasuke gasped, as he saw just what his brother Susanoo could be capable of. He looked over at Wei Big Ben struggling with Naruto against Valmaru. I wonder. He ran to the fight and made his way up onto Wei Big Ben's shoulder. Hey, what are you doing up here? To Custer Ben asked. Helping you? Sasuke activated his Mangekyo Sharingan and suddenly Wei Big Ben was covered in a purple chakra armor making Wei Big look like he was dressed in warrior's armor. Whoa! This is awesome! Wei Big Naruto cheered, as he ran at Valmaru striking harder than ever. Valmaru unleashed more of his shadow snakes, only for them to be grabbed out of thin air by Wei Big Naruto. Gotcha! He tugged hard bringing Valmaru to him. The chakra cloaked alien held his free hand out as a big Raisingan was forming in the palm. When Valmaru was heading right for him, he thrust the jutsu forward. But I'm a raisin gan. The jutsu collided with Valmaru. The hybrid was sent flying across the forest before crashing on the ground toppling many trees in the process. That'll leave a mark, high school Naruto said. And that will require a whole lot of ointment, Kevin added. So did we win? Sokka asked, as he, Kin, and Dosa looked up. Way big Naruto went overseeing the body of his enemy, but to his shock saw shed skin. He shed! Taking him by surprise, Valmara popped out of the ground and wrapped himself around him squeezing him. Let me go! Naruto! Wei Big Ben called until the Omnitrix started beeping. Oh no! In a flash of light the big alien became Ben again ending the Susanoo. Both Ben and Sasuke were plummeting to the ground only to land on the back of a dragon who was none other than Shredder Naruto. Nice catch! Ben called, as Shredder Naruto roared in response. But Naruto still needs our help. Sasuke said. But if that freak snake keeps shedding its skin how can we stop him? Ben asked. Shindu flew at Shredder Naruto's side. It would require a bigger attack. Bigger than a raisin gan. Flying up to them was Bang Baby Naruto on his saucer. What about a tailed beast bomb? The group looked at him feeling astonished, as Shindu answered. That would do the trick. But first we need to take out the rest of those serpents. Sasuke reminded them of the remaining giant serpents the other Narutos were fighting. Then I guess it's time I joined the fight. 
Bang Baby Naruto activated his Mangekyo and summoned his Susanoo which fired a blast of electricity at one of the snakes fighting Menma's Kurama distorting it, allowing the black-furred fox to claw it to pieces. Avatar Naruto seeing the fight spoke to himself. It's time I proved my true worth for coming here. He closed his eyes and opened them to reveal they were glowing along with his whisker marks and the seal on his stomach. He levitated up as fire, water, and bits of rock were revolving around him as if he were a planet. Now, let's fight! He spoke with a combo of his voice and the voice of Rava as he flew at one of the snakes and launched a blast of fire at its face to grab its attention. When the snake lunged at him with an open mouth, Avatar Naruto used waterbending at the roof of its mouth which solidified into a spear of ice that pierced through its head and brain thus killing it. Avatar Naruto flew around the remaining snakes, making them come to him. Follow the Avatar! He called, while evading their mouths. Bang Baby Naruto seeing this smirked as he saw what his Avatar counterpart was doing. When Avatar Naruto was leading them right to the metahuman shinobi, Bang Baby Naruto aimed his Swasno sword as it extended forward. Avatar Naruto flew up while the snakes were skewered by the blade and assimilated just as Itachi did to the one. Psychic Naruto looked around. No more giant snakes. That leaves only serpent squid there. He motioned to Chakra Cloak Way Big Fighting Valmaru. After regular Naruto was briefed by the others he called out. Everyone, we need a massive tail beast bomb. All users come to us at once. B. Yujuto and Gara looked at each other before nodding. They underwent their full tail beast forms, with Shikaku, Matatabi, and Gyuki looking ready. As Wei Big Naruto and Valmara fought, the Omnitrix wielder spoke. I'm not sure if either of you can hear me in that twisted conjoint mind of yours, but know this. When standing together with comrades in arms who fight for the greatest cause of saving the planet anything's possible. He threw a punch to Valmara's gut making the hybrid cough up blood. Taking advantage of his opponent's state, Wei Big Naruto grabbed Valmara by the arm and started swinging him around. You need to throw him up to the sky. Regular Naruto called. You got it. Wei Big Naruto answered as he chucked the villain up high making him soar up so high you could see the entire land. The group of Chakra Karamas, Shindu, Shikaku, Gyuki, and Matatabi gathered together and started taking in Chakra creating a massive sized sphere of Chakra. The group on the ground were marveled at the size of the tail beast bomb they were forming. With that enormous amount of Chakra coming from so many tail beasts, May began. Not even something as vile as that creature could come out alive, Oanoki added. When the group had mustered enough chakra and formed the enormous tailed beast bomb, they announced together. Tailed beast bomb! The massive chakra sphere was launched up to the sky on a direct collision course with Valmaru. As Valmaru was coming down he saw he was falling right for the chakra bomb that was shooting right up at him. And oh! He screamed before the two collided and resulted in a huge explosion that lit up the sky. All the shinobi and plumbers on the ground watched the explosion, with Kimimaro speaking. Not even someone like that could survive an attack that big. Damn right. Taiyi agreed. We really won? Prime Naruto asked, until he and the others looked back seeing Naruto, the rest of the counterparts, Sasuke, and Ben. We sure did, Naruto said, as he and Ben pounded it. So rad. They cheered. Paradox checked his pocket watch. Yes. We won the fight just as it was timed. The good guys cheered and applauded on their victory knowing planet Earth was saved from the threat of two tyrants. After the threat of Orochimaru and Valmark had passed, all of the hybrids they created were rounded up where they'd be taken back to HQ and cured. The robot parts of the destroyed drones were recovered and disposed of, while Kabuto, Tichiko, Nine Nine, and Kilotron were being taken in. Asmuth was speaking to Tsunade, Minato, Kushina, and Horizon. So Kilotron and Nine Nine will take him back to Galvan Prime to face punishment. The little alien began. While we'll be turning Tachiko over to Kusa while putting Kabuto on lockup on Kanoha. Tsunade finished. Good. Asma said before they turned to the Amalgam Five. And as for you five. By assisting us in defeating your former masters, we've talked about it and decided to shorten your punishment by doing community service around the plumber's HQ for at least two months. Ha, huh, doesn't sound so bad. Jirobo admitted. Mopping floors is the pits, but it's better than lockup. Taiya added. And just like we will cure the hybrids that Valmark had created, we may also cure you five as well. Asmuth added. Seriously? Kidamaru asked in disbelief. You five have earned it. Tsunade answered. The five looked at each other, until Kimimaro spoke. 
Actually, I think we'll keep these alien abilities of ours. Really? Asmuth crossed his arms. While this was done to us against our will, we have grown fond of our alien powers. Sakan began. Even I've gotten used to it, Taiyuya admitted. Well, if that's what you want, Asmuth replied. Although, think you can find a way to allow us to change back to our human looks and alien looks? Taiyuya inquired. Asmuth smiled. I'll see what I can do. Yes, the five cheered. Off to the side Jiraiya was talking with Conan about what happened. So with Orochimaru and Valmark destroyed, what are you going to do now? Jiraiya asked his last living pupil. The Akatsuki that once sought the tailed beasts is no more. With both Yahiko and Nagato gone I must do what I can make amends for the dangers we brought to the ninja land. It won't be easy, but someone's gotta do it. Jiraiya laid a hand on her shoulder and gave a comforting smile. You won't be alone in this. We'll all be here to help you. And not just Konoha, but the rest of the nations. Conan smiled. Thank you, Jiraiya-sama. The two embraced. As everything was being cleaned up, the Naruto's were chatting it up with themselves and even Team Tennyson. Regular Naruto was currently speaking with Metahuman Naruto, Spy Naruto, and Chi Wizard Naruto. So how's life being not only Hokage, but a married man? Chi Wizard Naruto inquired. It's not so bad. A little tiring, but it's all worth it. Regular Naruto answered. And how is it being the husband to the Hinata of your world? I mean have you at least have sex yet? Bang baby Naruto asked. We have two children. Ooh twice. Get you shag machine. Spy Naruto playfully punched regular Naruto's shoulder. So what are they like? Chi wizard Naruto asked. Well I got an older son named Boruto who's just as much a mischief maker as each of us was at a young age. And a little girl named Himawari who can be very scary and strong if you make her mad. Much like my mom. Why she once knocked me out with a powerful jab after Boruto accidentally damaged her favorite toy. Whoa. The three counterparts gasped. Spy Naruto wondered. Why not share this info with the rest of our counterparts? I don't think it's safe to tell them. Why not? She wizard Naruto wondered. Well, Spy Me already has kids. You two met your future offspring. But these guys don't have kids yet and I wouldn't want them to think they have to choose the names I chose for my kids for their own. Even if some of them aren't with Hinata. Good point. Bang Baby Naruto admitted. Ben and Omnitrix Naruto were speaking. That was some great teamwork, Ben. I know. We make one heck of a duo. Especially for a duo who can change into aliens. Naruto joked, and the two laughed. Kevin spoke. With Orochimaru and Valmark gone, you think your land's gonna be at peace now? I don't think it'll be as simple as that, Kevin. Gwen voiced up. Gwen's right. Akane agreed. Defeating those two may have been a leap forward to ensuring a bright and safe future on Earth for all humans and aliens. But there will always be someone out there to cause trouble. As is the way of life. Rook noted. Don't worry, Naruto said. Whatever else is out there or has yet to surface. My friends and I will do all we can to ensure it never wins. Spoken like a true hero. Paradox said before checking his watch. Oh dear. Sorry to cut this short, but it's time we all must head back. The Naruto's groaned as Ben spoke. Oh come on I want to see more of this ninja world. Yeah. Who knows what kind of stuff we could learn firsthand. Gwen added. Sorry, but that'll be for some other time. Paradox said. What can you do? Kevin asked his disappointed comrades. So after all the Naruto's gathered together the regular one spoke. It was awesome fighting alongside you all. Here's to the next time when we have to team up again. Avatar Naruto finished, as all the counterparts were sent through a portal back to their own worlds. Guess we're next, Ben said on behalf of himself and his group. Have a safe trip back, Sakura called. And if there ever is a next time, Naruto added. We'll be looking forward to it. Ben finished, as Paradox teleported Team Tennyson back to Bellwood in their own time period. Naruto smiled as he watched his friend return, before turning back to his own squad. We did it guys. Was there ever any doubt? Sasuke asked, while crossing his arms. Not a bit, Sakura answered. Naruto looked over and saw Tenten, Hinata, Akane, and Sami waiting for him. Be right back guys. He went over to his ladies. Naruto, you were amazing. Hinata smiled. Ice cold frozen. Sami smirked. We were all awesome. Naruto told them. That certainly proved to be an experience, Tenten said. I'll say. Akane agreed. 
With this threat gone, we'll definitely look back on this day and recall how we truly fought for not only our village, but the ninja land itself. Naruto was taken aback as a mana stream coiled around him and was pulled over by Hinata who held the end of it. I know I'll remember it. Because it's also the day I did this. She pulled Naruto into a kiss and made out passionately with him, while Naruto melted into it. This act left the other three in surprise. This is bold of you, Hinata. Ten Ten gasped. When they parted, Hinata smiled their way. I know. My turn. Akane jumped in and passionately kissed Naruto who was still bound by Hinata's mana restraint. They parted, and Naruto spoke. Akane, that was frickin' hot. Akane giggled, as Samui approached him. Here's a little something on the cool side. She kissed Naruto who returned it. When they parted, Ten Ten finished it. We all make a great team with you leading us, Naruto. The two kissed. When they parted, Ten Ten smiled at Naruto who smiled back. Thanks, girls. Now, Hinata, could you let me out of this restraint? The girls laughed with Naruto who spoke seriously. Seriously, let me go. My back is getting itchy. 25 years later, Kanoha had evolved from a simple village into a technological utopia with skyscrapers and towers as part of the new building structure along with the old kind. Monorails were riding through the village and leaving to other parts of the world. One thing that hadn't changed was the Hokage Mountain, now bearing seven heads instead of five. In the village people and aliens were going about their daily life with no worry, until something crashed through a wall. The group of villagers gasped, as it was revealed to be a detrovite like Vulcanus and Technorg. The alien got up as another stepped out from the hole created by him. It was a tetraman bearing the symbol of the Omnitrix. Man, Valkrin, you're making this look too easy, Forearm said. Valkrin got up. Careful you don't get overconfident. Overconfident? Me? I don't think so. Forearms answered, as he and Valkrin grappled. Many of the villagers watched in amaze, as one human spoke. Is it him? No doubt about it. Naruto Uzumaki the seventh Hokage and bearer of the Omnitrix. An alien tourist answered. Forearms using his bottom set of limbs socked his opponent in the gut, before grabbing him by the head and kneed him in the gut several times. He finally threw Valkrin over his shoulders and landed on the ground with a thud knocking him out cold. Yeah! He pumped his four fists up in victory. Suddenly a crowd formed around him thanking him. Thank you. Thank you. You're too kind. You were amazing. A little girl said. Thanks for saving us. A boy alien added. You're a real hero Mr. Naruto. A lady thanked him. Naruto? Ma'am, I'd wish that was me. This left the crowd in confusion, as a man asked. But if you're not Naruto, then who are you? Suddenly the Omnitrix symbol on forearms started timing out. Then in a flash of green stood a human boy aged 12 with spiky blonde hair, blue eyes, and two whisker marks on both cheeks. He wore shinobi sandals, black pants, and green short-sleeved shirt. Tied around his forehead was a Konoha headband, while on his left wrist was the Omnitrix. I'm Baruto Uzumaki, he declared with a wink. The crowd was in deeper shock. Baruto? The Hokage's son? Baruto was enjoying the attention, until a voice called out. Baruto! The boy and the villagers looked up seeing someone standing on top of a water tower. The figure jumped down and landed on the ground. The figure was who else but Naruto himself. Naruto who was now a full-grown adult had trimmed his hair shorter and was now wearing black boots, camouflage pants, and a black muscle shirt. The Omnitrix he wore had looked more like a gauntlet as it was upgraded over the years courtesy of Azmuth. Hey dad, did you see that? Baruto asked Naruto with hope. Yes I did. That was good work, but next time try and keep it cleaner. Baruto face faulted. You know it's not easy to keep a clean fight when battling an opponent like that. Besides he was smashing up the village so much it's not like I could have been every spot at once. Baruto, most of the smashing was done by you. Naruto said bluntly. Baruto hearing that chuckled sheepishly having been in public. Naruto turned to the crowd who were amazed to see both Hokage and his son. Nothing to see here. Move along people. And with that the crowd dispersed. Naruto summoned a shadow clone and gave it a command. Take Valkrin back to Plumber's base and put him in lockup. The clone nodded and changed into XLR8 before bounding Valkrin and took him off to Plumber's HQ. Naruto turned to his son. Baruto, I got you that Omnitrix as a graduation present not only because you graduated the Ninja Academy, but because I felt you were responsible to use it. Aren't I? Baruto asked. While you did get the job done, 
and kept it as clean as you could. You must remember to not overdo it. Use your head when in battle and not just your fists. Burrito sighed. Yes, father. Good. Now come on. Everyone's waiting for us. He became XLR8 and picked his boy up before speeding off. He arrived at the site of their home. They went inside and saw a crowd of people waiting. Among them included Tsunade, Shizen, Minato, Kushina, Kakashi, Azmuth, Sakura, Sasuke, Hinata, Akane, Samui, and Tenten. Standing next to Hinata was a little girl about age 10 who looked like her mother. She had dark blue hair worn with straight bangs and a heimcut. Her hair flared out on the sides and back, and she has a cowlick on the top of her head. She had blue eyes like her father and whisker markings on each cheek. Next to Akane was a 16-year-old girl with long blonde hair with some silver streaks, emerald-colored eyes, and a blonde foxtail sticking out from behind. She wore silver sandals that went up to her knees, a blue skirt, and a bluish silver short-sleeved shirt. Tied around her forehead was a Kanoha headband. Her bust looked to be around a high C cup. Standing by Tenten was a 14-year-old girl with short brown hair, blue eyes, and wore a red nose-sleeved Chinese-style shirt, black pants, and sandals. Her bust was about a low C cup. She wore the Kanoha headband. By Samui was a 16-year-old girl with short bleach blonde hair with a few spikes in it. She wore blue sandals, a white skirt, a short-sleeved mesh shirt underneath a short-sleeved blue shirt and wore the Kanoha headband. Her bust was about 80 cup size. Congratulations, Baruto! They cheered while making noise with party poppers and noise makers. Baruto smiled as Naruto led his son over to the group, as Hinata hugged the boy. We're all so proud of you, Baruto. Thanks, mom. Thanks, everyone. Baruto smiled. Now that you're a shinobi, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of challenges. Minato warned him. I can dig it, Gramps. Baruto replied. But remember you won't be alone in this. Kushina noted. You'll have your team with you. Sakura added. And they will help you just as you will help them. Sasuke put in as a girl about Baruto's age approached him. She had short black hair and wore glasses, while dressed similar to Sakura when she was 16. Let's get along well. Okay, Baruto? She asked. Sure thing, Sarada. He smiled at the girl who looked flustered before looking away. Sakura and Sasuke looked at each other and smiled. Asmuth hovered by on his platform. And remember not to go overboard with the Omnitrix. Your father entrusts you with your Omnitrix as much as I do. So don't make us regret giving it to you. I won't let you or dad down, Asmuth, sir. Baruto saluted, and suddenly found himself glomped form behind by the girl who stood next to Akane. Baruto, we're so proud you've joined the ranks just like us. She cheered while holding him close to her impressive bust. Dina, please not in front of everyone. Baruto pleaded while trying to hide the blush on his cheeks. Baruto was suddenly pulled away from Dina and was smothered into the bosom of the girl who stood by Tenten. If you want any help you can always ask your beautiful sisters. Especially me. She whispered. Not you too, Meili. Baruto groaned, and was once again snatched by the girl who stood next to Samui. And if any enemy tries to harm you, you can always count on us to protect you. The girl whispered. Kikuheim, I'm seriously going to die from all this attention. Baruto cried, as his face was turning beet red. The adults laughed, as the girl who stood next to Hinata went up to him, and hugged him. You be safe out there on missions, okay, big brother? Baruto, taken aback by her hug, smiled and returned the gesture. You bet, Himawari. Soon the two were joined by a group hug from the rest of Naruto's daughters with his other brides. Naruto stood by his four brides smiling, knowing in his heart the future of not only Kanoha, but the entire ninja land if not the world would be in the best of care. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you want the next part of this video, like subscribe and comment down below and turn on the bell notification. And also check out other videos that I have created and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.